Oi there, it's Skyward Shield. Welcome to a new Football Talks. I am joined by Bill. Say hello, Bill. Hey, hey. All right, so let's let's jump into this. We have plenty to talk about because the AFC and the NFC championships are in the books. So now we know our two Super Bowl teams, and before we get to anything, we gotta wish we gotta wish my boy Bill a happy belated birthday. His birthday was <laughs> over this weekend. How old are oh, you yeah. now, Bill? Uh, way too old. 34 now? 34, yeah. Oh, you're climbing up there, Bill. You would have had to retire <laughs> at this point if you were a football player. Oh, yeah. I, especially if I was a running back. Good lord. Yeah. Speaking of running back, um, yeah, we're going to have one uh, high-rated uh, name make the, the uh, free agency scene later, but that will oh, have yeah. to... I, uh, I'm going to tell you right now, Bill, I know he won't do it, because they we have Lamar Miller, but I would like for Peterson to come. But he has to be aware that he will not be the number one guy. But he has a workhorse mentality already. He's done that. Because what I would see a use is because Lamar Miller, I don't think, is qualified to be a workhorse type of player. I can understand no. why the Dolphins underutilize him. I think they could have used him more. But I think that the the like to me the Texans used him more, and the Dolphins used him less. They need to find that middle ground, and the other. Running backs are not dependable yet, so my my what? belief is if you have someone like Peterson to be your number two, you'd have a dangerous combination because Lamar Miller's legs will be more fresh and Peterson can t carry the load when, um, when um, Miller can't, and that'll right. lessen the likely for injuries on both of them. Right. I mean. I I don't think it'll happen for the simple fact that I think Adrian Peterson looks at himself as a number one and he's not going to accept anything less than number yeah, one. Yeah, like, I bet he wanted to go to Dallas, but until they drafted the Elliot, there's no way he'll make it there. I would think I mean, if he goes in, if they split the workload, I think it'd work, but if he goes to the Giants, he'd be an idiot because their running, their running scheme is bad. I don't know why Ben McAdoo does not know how to run the ball for his team. Right now, I, I I cannot see I can't see uh, Peterson going to Dallas. Uh, you know, oh, Ezekiel no. Elliott's just a. He's already said player. the places that are interesting to him. Remember, before they drafted Elliott, it was Houston and and Dallas. Right. But now he's only have Houston, um, New York, and I forget the other team. There's a third team, but I can't remember the Colts. Right. <sighs> can't remember i'm not sure but you know i mean to be fair probably the best the best situation for him to go to is the third option in that and because houston he's on being the, num the number two the giants he could be the number one but i think uh, it's a bad but, idea but bob mcadoo he he just gets pass happy uh quite a lot oh it's the bucks you know? I, I could see that happening. It could make like same thing. It's the same situation with um, I mean he'll get he'll be the number one guy uh, from the beginning because uh, what's his name, Doug Doug Martin Doug gone. Martin suspended for the first few games. Yep. So he will start. He'll basically be going through what um, how, what's that the um, what's his name for the Pittsburgh? He used to play with Carolina. We I saw him this week. Uh, D'Angelo Williams. Yeah, he would be doing what D'Angelo Williams. Williams did at the beginning of this year, re replace Le'Veon Bell. Right. Yeah. So, he'd be a leader from the get-go, and he can prove himself. But you know, after that, he would have to accept himself as number two, unless he clearly is better than uh, Doug Martin, which I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> right. <laughs> I I think if he wants to preserve himself, if he really wants to go for the thirty-five, he needs to uh, play a bit more um, conservatively and be willing to 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 rest, basically. Yeah, yeah. he's a violent runner, and he that violent running streak will get him injured. I mean, he's got to – he's got to – I think he needs to start conserving himself like he's in his mid-30s, mid like he almost is. Yeah, but um, anyway. So, yeah, just a bit of mention on that, but let's get started. Let's talk about – Oh boy, Bill, I didn't think it'd be this <laughs> big of a blowout, but you know what? I could go to the comments section and tell people 
those those Packers fans who are like, nah, you can relax, relax. I think we can run the table. No, you all can relax because your team is not going to Houston. It's going to stay home in Lambeau, in the cold, where you belong. Have fun watching the Patriots or the Falcons hoist up the trophy that you couldn't get to. And some will say, you were wrong, Josh. They still made the playoffs. Well, here's the thing. You said run the table. Relax. You are gonna you can make it to the Super Bowl. To me, if making the playoffs is all you're concerned with, like, unless you're the Browns, making the playoffs is a miracle for you, that's, if you haven't made the playoffs in so long, I can understand that. That's a different situation, but you're a winning team, you win the division most years, if not every year, and you're just concerned about making the playoffs, you should be aiming for the Super Bowl every year. Any, so in reality, from my perspective, if you don't win the trophy, that's a failed season. Right. Again. Especially, especially here's the other issue, is... Aaron Rodgers is just starting to leave his prime. And in his prime, they didn't win a trophy. You know, they he, won one. He, he won one, but he was at the very beginning of his prime. So in I, a way, he's like he Drew, really... Drew Brees. But uh, to be fair, at least Drew Brees has bad coaching now and team a bad defense. I mean... Green Bay, though, when Aaron Rodgers came in, he he was just new to the game, learning the game still, and that's when he won. You know, he hit his prime in 2010, 2011 to 2016 was his prime years, and now he's on the back half of his career, and, I mean, you can sort of see the the... Uh, the flaws starting to come out. You know, he's not as accurate as he once was. Uh, to be fair, a lot of his players drop balls they should have caught. That's been a theme this for the playoffs. Have you noticed that? There are a lot of big plays for every team, winning or losing, where they could have caught the ball and bam, touchdown. Or, you know, big play could change the game entirely. Like, for example, Will Fuller last week dropped the easiest touchdown pass you could have ever asked for Osweiler. That was the best throw he will, he had all game, and it didn't count. Or um, right. when we get to Pittsburgh and New England, the Pittsburgh Steelers dropped 120, or 16 to 125 yards worth of uh, passes. That, those yardage, that yardage would have changed the game and made it a lot closer. You don't right. do that. Yes. Like, you can't, even when you're facing a team like you're facing uh in this case Super Bowl level teams you cannot make mistakes like that constantly because it can literally cost you the game yes because if even if your one side of the ball makes mistakes as long as the other one can do its job it's possible to come back and hell it can bring a spark i mentioned this before like with last week the spark a spark is all you need to ignite the flames of hope i for, i forget yeah. where i heard that from but i didn't make that up uh, don't 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 cite me for plagiarism, guys. I I don't know where it came from. I heard it from somewhere, but anyway, oh, yeah. yeah. But to fi I just want to finish bashing the Packers fans, Bill. In fact, I think for this pic the whole part, this segment, I'm gonna get the picture I I had on my phone onto the computer. If if you not if you haven't seen it, Bill, I'll show it to you right now. I put it I put it yesterday. Let me go get it for you because oh yeah yeah I you know what that, I'm talking about. I said yeah. GG could not run the table. Packers fans, if you should not be saying it's all fine, you you made the playoffs. No. To me, in my perspective, unless you win the finals, you, you that's a failed season. But again, unless you're a, a special situation, like say the Cleveland Browns or in basketball the Philadelphia 76ers, you know teams that can barely get any wins. Like if you want a perfect example that happens happening today. As uh, Bill, I, I forgot to finish this conversation with you about the Spurs because we straight off topic. But my point was, after beating them, after beating the Cavs, which thank you Cavs for literally giving us the game-winning ball, <laughs> and Kawhi Leonard, 41 points, MVP. But anyway, they have 34 wins, nine losses. The Brooklyn Nets, just like Philadelphia, just if they could make the playoffs, that is progress. But they have right. nine wins and 34 losses. This, their records are literally flipped. It's a tale of two teams right there. One's surging as one of the best, and one's surging or blowing it as one of the worst. Right, yes. But anyway, 
again, unless you're a team like that, who's had constant failure after failure after failure, just make it the playoffs is hope enough to give your team sparks for the future. And, you know, we've had teams like that who have been garbage, but then just go make a big run like Seattle a few years ago. They were a bad team before Russell Wilson came in. And now look where they're at. Right. Now they're a legit contender every year. Exactly. You know. And even and if you want to get technical, the Saints were pretty bad. I mean, aside from their Manning days, which they didn't even win a Super Bowl then, Drew Brees literally saved New Orleans. That's why there's always that thing. Drew Brees and the Saints saved New Orleans. Yeah, they did. But right. you know, that's I that, mean, that's that's part of their narrative. The the Arizona Cardinals are another example of that. Oh yeah. The Arizona Cardinals were one of the laughing stock franchises for 50 years and now they're a legit nasty team every year. And they have one of the best coaches that's not named Bill Belichick. Exactly. But um but seriously, you should uh, again, to me everyone else may think differently, but if you don't win the finals trophy or your Super Bowl or whatever you call a trophy, Whatever trophies at the end of this of the of the road, if you don't win that, it's not a successful season. Right. So basically, only agree. one out of thirty-two teams can say they had a successful season. Right. And we're gonna yes. see who had the truly successful season. In fact, I would say Atlanta's a success because the past two three years, they were about as bad as the Texans were. But then getting Dan Quinn from the Seahawks, who was already known right. championship winning a championship. Then you have Kyle Shanahan, whose offense is so good that the next year everybody and their mother wants him on their roster. Right. I mean, it it's the Atlanta Falcons are a blueprint for the rest of the league to where they should be heading towards. Yeah. Oh, okay, now Bill. Now I see for I see um all of the. Uh... The AFC Pro Bowl stuff, you know, the people who got replaced. I I only saw the NFC. I was like, why is this so little people? <laughs> right. Yeah. But anyway, just just to just to say, I didn't even finish the whole narrative about the Falcons. This was the last game in the Georgia Dome, and you could not have asked for a. I wouldn't. I guess you could say it wasn't the perfect game because it wasn't close. But in terms of you just wanted a lopsided win to really go out with a bang, this was the way to do it. Right. I mean, you know, an NFC title, you beat you beat a team that calls themselves Title Town. You know, you you beat that, and that's your final game at the stadium, and you beat an all-time great quarterback in Aaron Rodgers in the prime of his career. That's a perfect way to end that stadium's history. Yeah. And who knows, you could probably bring it oh uh you can probably bring uh bring home your new stadium which looks really good by the way. Like I told you Bill, I think the Minnesota Vikings stadium is already one of my favorites that I really want to go visit. But the right. Falcons one just looking at the exterior it looks sharp, literally sharp. But um, you might cut yourself on it. Too. I'm gonna cut myself just looking at it. <laughs> exactly. But it's so it's so triangular. Yeah, it it looks like a, I can't think of it's like a like a far, one of those farming tools. Right. Yeah. It looks yeah. like a farming a tool. Well, that or, or a bunch uh, of shurikens stacked on top of each other. <laughs> but anyway, right. so back to this game. This is what I was. This was what I was thinking. The first team to make a big mistake would lose this game because the other one's going to make them pay. And the the Packers caused two turnovers. The Falcons played a perfect game. Right. And yeah. every time they scored for all but one or two drives, just two, one, maybe two punts. I know they had one punt. That's it. It was touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. They scored out of five of their six drives. I think that game. This team this team is heavily reliant on scoring early and scoring often often. Yeah. And I mean and they need to score early and often to offset that defense which kind of is is a little bit lackluster. It's it's gotten better sure, but it's still not the greatest 
uh, defense. So obviously they need to score early and often to offset that. Yeah. <clears throat> but, oh man, that the Julio Jones for playing not a hundred percent because you had both to the both teams best wide receivers playing a bit injured though uh, Jordy Nelson was worse oh yeah by shape. a long shot yeah yep. but Julio Jones not even 100% is still beating beating them and like people were saying this defense king is good no you the difference was you beat like the, the the Packers were basically beating a bad defense on their own and Dallas's offense just had some really bad moments especially some costly penalties such as the um, the sportsman like conduct call, which is a bizarre call for me, but I don't think it was a wrong call. Right. But um, I mean, don't tell the Cowboys fans that to be like, oh, you just hate the Cowboys. <laughs> no, you know the whole oh the refs helped that team win. No, they pretty much were. I want to say they tried to help either or because they missed a lot of calls for both sides. So yeah. I mean, that's that's just bad refing yeah. at that point. That's just not being biased. That's just them being bad at their job. Yeah, but I mean, to be fair, most NFL referees are inept pieces of garbage, anyways. Minus a few, like Ed Hockley and a few others. Yeah. But you know, they're overall the the quality of NFL referees has went down in the last five years. Oh yeah, but anyway, so going back to this game. Um, forty-four to twenty-one was the final score. I was go- I'm I, I think I predicted forty-four thirty-one. I forget my prediction, but I won't. No, no, I went over fifty. I went fifty-one to thirty-one. <laughs> I was close. Yeah, touchdown like off, that. but you know what? It's fine. I'm. It's it's all good because to be honest, this this showed on one hand. When the Packers win, Rodgers typically does it himself. Like, I don't agree. I don't always agree with what people say about Rodgers, but I think I can agree with them on this. When they win a hard game, it's usually because he had to make that move himself. It's not, oh, the defense won it for him, or the running back just makes a big play when it matters. No. Chances are when they win, that deciding play is always because of him, which typically games are decided by their quarterbacks. But, you know... Other great teams can just decide it by getting a like you know getting a key interception. For example, in this in two two Super Bowls ago, the 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 Patriots Seahawks one, it wasn't a quarterback that decided it. Although technically you could say that, but it was a quarterback. It was Malcolm Butler, and now look at him. He's viewed as one of the best cornerbacks in the game. Right. I mean, in I mean, you know. With with Aaron Rodgers, if if you really looked at that game when it was so far behind, you know he was single handedly willing that team down the field. He was running the f- football. He was gaining fifteen yards on the ground with his feet. And he, he was just and they were shut out for the first that. half. Yeah, yeah. They were in the exactly. in the first half, and the second half he tried to rally. But here's the thing. The defense really was what killed them in this game because look, the Packers could score a touchdown every drive. Like they could have scored every touch a touchdown every drive in that game. But guess what? Every time the Falcons scored a touchdown to match, you see what I mean? It does like your touchdown doesn't mean anything if the defense can't get a stop. You just need one more stop, and if they can't get the stop, it doesn't matter what you did then. It means you have to do it again and then again if they score. You know what I mean? You already had to do it, but then you had to do it quicker. And it just it wears on the offense as much as the defense is already choking for them. The defense right. for the Packers yeah. was non-existent. <laughs> it's, this is proof that they have so much problems on defense. We've been saying it for years. Some people say they're sneaky good. Remember, in the beginning of the season, it's like, oh, they have the best run defense. But then Ezekiel Elliott said otherwise. Then they said the Ravens had an uh, uh, unbeatable, unbeatable run defense. And then the, and Elliott did it to them. You see what I mean? Like they, they, these stats for the defenses this year, like people were saying the Texans had the best offense or defense, which, from what I'm watching it, I can tell you, no, they make they can make some pretty big mistakes at times. They're a tight defense. They're a tight defense, but when you expose them, you expose them big. Right. I mean, I'll I'll put it this way. Sometimes the over celebrated 
uh, uh, defenses are the ones that have a great offense. Yeah, because they're them. masking. Same with Dallas. Everyone said Dallas's was good, and I've been selling you guys. If they were going to lose for every any reason, it would be the cornerbacks, and that's why they lost because their corners were holding on to dear life. And I'm not even exaggerating; they were holding on to the to the Packers players. They were holding on to Devontae Adams and Randall Cobb <laughs> because they couldn't keep and up and handle them. What? Yeah, exactly. But speaking of people hanging on for dear life, they were hanging on for dear life against Julio Jones. Julio Jones was legitimately running by people in that defense. I think that if the Falcons have any chance to beat the Patriots, it has to be him. And I don't think that it's going to be that easy. I know Julio is still going to get catches. He's, I think that's inevitable. But... It's he is not going to make it easy for them, and then he, to top that off, they're getting two weeks rest, so he's very likely going to be at 100 percent. This whole team is going to be oh, at 100 yeah. percent, so that's what makes this Super Bowl look very promising. Oh yeah, definitely. So, but um, aside from that, though, the defense is playing better. I think Dan Quinn's defense is coming into shape. In fact, I'll say it now: if the Falcons don't win it this year, I think they could do it next year. But although the only problem is. Shanahan's uh, absence. I think that might make it a, make a big problem. I think if what I'm thinking is if Kyle Shanahan and this and this Falcons team lose, I think he's gonna stay for one more year. And at that point, right. he's gonna get his stock up because to be honest, all the spots that are left, they're not good teams. But say you could maybe go for another team if another team that has a promising group of players and they just have another bad season a coach gets fired. I'm not naming anyone specific here. I can't think of any. You could go to that one. Maybe they already have a qual a qualified one, a qualified place to go to. You know what I mean? Exactly. I, if I were him, I don't care about that, that 49ers job. I don't care how much money they give me. I'm staying away from that. <laughs> but, exactly. That's what I think. If they lose... He's gonna he's gonna stay, but if he win if they win he's gonna go because he already got his ring, he got a ring. So now he's gonna try and do it on his own. So like you know, right? So exactly. You know what I mean? You're part of the product when you won, and this, and that's why typically uh, coordinators leave to become head coaches after they win a Super Bowl, like Dan Quinn, ironically, um, because they want to see if they can win one by themselves as the head coach. Right. I mean. I think it's kind of an well, ego thing, but it's not the well, worst thing. Well, it's—I mean, every—if you're—if you're a coordinator, typically, you have—you have aspirations to be a head coach somewhere. You know, you're never—you never want to be just an, a defensive coordinator or an offensive coordinator. There's exceptions to that rule, of course, like Dick LeBeau or you know, uh, what's his face, Tom Moore. People like that, those are coordinators. You know, yeah. they they love Rex being Ryan. coordinators. Don't forget, but I think Rex I, Ryan was that perfect example of why not everybody's meant to be a head coach. Oh yeah, not everyone's meant to be a head coach, but a lot of coordinators want to be head coaches. You know, I mean, you know, there's there's tons. If if any coordinator was offered a head coaching position, they would immediately say yes. Yeah. But anyway, um, I I think this offense is almost unstoppable. But I, as much as I want to give this defense a lot of credit because they're getting so much better and they're getting hot at the right time, I don't know how it's going to do against another higher octane offense that's healthy. Because, look, as much as people want to give the Packers credit for how they did when they made their little run the table, which GG didn't run the table, they had no running backs. They, like, when they won their, their, their little run, they beat mostly bad teams. When you beat Dallas, sure, I'll give you that. You beat, you beat Ace, you beat it, um, a t a number, the number one seed. You beat a really good offensive team. I'll give you that. You did. That was the best win they had in their whole little run. Because, like I said, they they beat bad teams. In fact, I'm gonna read to you all what they said, and we're gonna move on to the pat to the um to the other game after this. But let me okay. just I'm gonna read their schedule to you and just say, look who they beat when they <laughs> made their little run. Remember, the run the table started when they beat the the they beat the Eagles. 
because that was when they got blown out against the the uh, Washington football team with a very similar score, actually. Oh, and then before that, they got blown out by the Titans. So right, things were looking bad there. But then look who they beat. You beat the Pack. I mean, you beat the Eagles. You beat the Texans. The Seahawks was your best win, but at that point, they were already not destined to go anywhere because they lost Earl Thomas, their absolute key. Then you beat the, pe- the, the, the beat the Bears, you beat the Vikings, and you beat the Lions. Aside from the Seahawks, those other teams, nowhere near playoff worthy. Not even the Texans were playoff worthy. Their defense was, but Brock Osweiler. You gonna tell me that that was your that you're proud of that? Right. No. Sure, the Vikings beat you the first time, but at that point, that's when they were healthy and they were dominant. And at that point, they were right. just so injured in Ben, and I, I guess... I, I, I mean... What, Bill? Uh, the Vikings were injury-ravaged, and so were the Lions. The Lions were nowhere near the team that they were when they first faced them, either. And again, they just like play, they like to play half a game. Yeah, and they play half a game, typically. Anyway, so with that in mind, and then the playoffs, you beat the Giants, which the Giants, I can give you that, but I just don't trust Eli Manning for it with his arm right now. He needs to rest that thing for, like, not even use it for anything in his life until it's uh, football time. <laughs> I feel right. It feels like it looks like a zombie arm that's decaying rapidly, but the other arm's just fine. So at this rate, he'll be throwing with his left arm. Oh, jeez. But anyway, yeah, so... You can give your little credit for your your uh, your your streak, but you know the only real team that you beat that I could say with confidence that was a really good win for you was the Cowboys. That's it. Right. I can't yeah. say for Seattle exactly. Maybe if you beat them at their place, I could give it to you. But at at home, yeah. But anyway, so the Packers did not make the run. They didn't run the table. GG. Have, I hope you had fun, Packers fans, but don't be like, oh, woe is us. We are suffering. We are a pain franchise. No. But no, get over no, yourself. Near that. That's not bad at all. <laughs> this is showing you that you're actually, just like the Saints are, wasting your star quarterback's talents. Because you ha- <laughs> will not, you will not uh, f- uh, supervise their defense, which is the biggest issue. It is the Achilles heel. I think this, if this isn't a wake-up call, Mike McCarthy absolutely should get fired. I don't think they will I mean, now because they made it to the title game, but I would fire him. I would fire him already, but I know that the, the team feels like they could win with him. So I wouldn't do it. To fire the, the, yeah. They need to fire the def- Defensive coordinator, but I'm I'm perfectly fine with them. Keeping yeah, I'm the I'm on the same boat. Like with the, <laughs> I'm fine like with the Colts. It's like, hey, you can keep Chuck Pagano as long as you want. I don't care. Yeah, as long if they keep playing like this, I don't care. Exactly. But anyway, exactly. let's exactly. let's move on to the other one, the AFC title game in the throne of ease in Boston. People were rallying here because you had people like David Ortiz for. Um, uh, you had him there. You uh, pretty much you had uh, like half of the Boston Red Sox there to watch because this title game. You could say, "Oh, it's just a title game with the with the uh, with the uh, Patriots." Like any other year, you had him there. You had Paul Pierce watching the game. You had all these big uh, Boston sports stars all gathering to watch this title game because it meant a lot more to the Patriots than any other year. Even almost as much, I would argue, as the 16-0 run. You know why, Bill? <laughs> why? Everyone's favorite commissioner was too much of a <laughs> pussy to show up. Yep. He, I mean... Okay. He did not want to go... He chose to go to the Atlanta game, which... I, I mean, that one was a blowout, too. But he's been afraid. We've mentioned it before. He's been afraid of, of Foxborough for so long. And here's the best part. You can't avoid the Super Bowl. You have to be there because you have to present the trophy. Right. I mean, and and then there's the there's the night before when they hold that joint press conference with both uh, coaches. You know that joint press conference that they do. Can you imagine with uh, because. Goodell is always in that building as well with those two. Can you imagine Belichick being in there? Yeah. 
That will. I mean, I think it'll be fun. I real. This is why I really want the the uh, the the Patriots to win this one, because this one they won't say it. I don't think they'll say anything until after they win, because I don't think they want to jinx it, and they just don't want to show that bad character yet. That's what I think. Oh, I just yeah. think they don't want to jinx anything, which I think is they, fair. They obviously want to win one and stick in Roger Goodell's Yeah, but they're not going to say win one. Oh, yeah, they want to win one for the city, so that way Roger Goodell is forced to come to New England exactly. and get food like he should be. He needs to take that. He needs to take the heat. He he made this choice to suspend Brady when there was nothing decisive about Deflake, which I don't worry. I'm not going to spend more than two minutes on this matter. And whether he, I don't believe he's right because you couldn't find anything truly decisive. Right. I mean, I mean the issue is is he Roger Goodell has not handled that like a man. He's handled it very poorly. He should have just went to New England, took the booing, and moved on with life. But nope, he has to run and hide like a coward. And now, and now it's a giant story. Up, oh, Roger Goodell in the New at this England rate, Patriots. He, at this rate, he'll he will not go to the Super Bowl to oversee the destruction of the Georgia Dome. <laughs> He'd rather go watch that. But I mean. You never know. But here's the thing. This, this, like, the longer he waits, like, the longer he waits, the more it's gonna, um, how I put it? The longer he waits, the worse it's gonna get for him. So if he went earlier in the year, the boos would never be as bad as they would if he win the Super Bowl. Because that, that, that game is gonna be loud. I think it's gonna be louder than all the other Super Bowl wins they've had. Because of just that one reason, Goodell. Because you tried, you tried to make sure Tom Brady could make it to the Super Bowl. But not only his, him winning and being one of the best quarterbacks in the game, but even his backup was playing great. Right. <laughs> and that's what oh. I find surprising. But anyway, let's actually move on to the game because, oh boy, this game. For a time, it felt like there were many opportunities, as I mentioned earlier, with the Steelers, with their missed opportunities, no pun intended. There were a lot of opportunities to come back, and you had over 100 yards of drop passes. Should you have made those, this game might be a little different. It would be a little bit closer. The defense was right. gashed. The Because, Bill, I, I mean... I, don't, I told you, but you saw it too, I think. You saw the flea flicker. That is the play of the game for me, Bill. That was... Oh, yeah. I mean, there are, there were actually a couple other really good uh, moments from this game. Like, this was a game, if you're a Patriots fan, it was a very memorable one. Oh, yeah. Because there... I mean, what? No, no, go ahead. Because you had that, the flea flicker. Looks like a run to Dion. I think it was Dion Lewis or White. But then just pass, gives it back to Brady, throws it to Hogan, who Chris Hogan, he dropped a couple balls too. But you know what? Aside from those mistakes, really good game. I'm going to be honest. I won't be surprised if Danny Amendola gets cut because I don't think Edelman's going anywhere. My my fears of Edelman have been quelled because he is not going anywhere now. No. no but I Amendola, mean, I could see going. There's no reason to keep Danny Amendola. Really, you know, Amendola, his role in the offense was uh, taken over by Hogan. You know, really, Hogan is in his position. Yeah, he's taking that position, and you know what? He's earned his keep. I mean, he was a Bills reject, then he stuck it to the Bills when they went to they went to uh, Orchard Park, and then now he has become one of their best receivers aside from Edelman. Like and then Martellus Bennett with Gronk gone. This is Martell. This could be Martellus Bennett's big game, because this is yeah, his first I mean, Super Bowl appearance, and he's excited for it. Oh yeah, and he's only on a one-year deal. I mean, he's playing for money right now. I mean, good lord, this is this is this is a payday coming for him. I mean, he's proving his worth without Gronk. You know and. I mean, Martellus was going to get paid anyway, but, you know, now he is going to get paid. Yeah, 
And he, this, I mean, to me, if the Patriots are to win, the big thing is you got to contain that hot, hot Falcons offense, while the, your offense can do you know, do damage, which I think is very much possible. The pass rush they pass rush they played against um, with um, the Packers was nothing. It was non-existent. Right. I mean, it, and. The, the proof is in the pudding with uh, the New England Pit- Pittsburgh game because Ben Roethlisberger was under duress the entire game. I wouldn't game. say just him. I felt like even though D'Angelo Williams, Le'Veon Bell, Le'Veon Bell didn't even play more than a quarter of this game because he had a groin injury. Right. But as great as he is, he is injury prone, especially in the playoffs, which sucks. But I don't even think if Bell was there, this game would have been much different. It might have been closer, but to me, what really cost them was those missed catches. And there were some really good catches that Ben threw. It's like if you ju- you had to catch them. There were a lot of, there were a lot of you had to catch those in this playoffs, uh, in these playoffs this year. So much what? I could make a compilation of it, and it would last more than ten minutes, I think. <laughs> and all all these games, it's bad. It's really bad, Bill. Like it's it's unacceptable. Like I, Tomlin, oh. this uh, one thing I want to say. I swear to God, by the time this video goes up, or in my case, I don't want to hear tomorrow or the day after, somewhere throughout this week or next week, that oh the Pittsburgh Steelers are reporting that the New England Patriots have cheated, and Roger Goodell's already on the suspension order and suspending Brady for the Super Bowl. I don't want to hear any of that shit because to be honest, I think they just got outplayed. And the Steelers, Tom Lidium had admitted himself that he did not, like, he they got outmanned in everything. Because the Pittsburgh Steelers play zone defense, and that is the easiest defense for Brady to go through. He, he surgically operated on them, so precise. And I'm just watching, Bill, we are watching a legend still at work, and I am trying to enjoy every minute of it while I still have it. Exactly. And... You know, the other thing that really, I mean, Tom Brady doesn't need any more motivation, but what the Pittsburgh Steelers said about the Patriots in the locker room. Thanks to, uh, thanks, you know, um, who, uh, thanks to Antonio Brown. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Antonio Brown. I mean, not that they needed any extra motivation to be ready for this game, but they came out laser laser focused to put a hurting on this team you know and they put a hurting on this team yeah and here's the thing they didn't even rely on the run game which speaking of the run i know they played poorly in the run but that's pittsburgh they like to they don't like to let teams run on them so easily and especially pit a pay the patriots they play they try to play them like it's like they're playing baltimore they don't succeed on it very often, but they try to at least play them like they are both the Baltimore Ravens. Right. But they it, when the Garrett Blunt was running to it, like it was like like first and goal, or it was, you know, it was like around the twenty. He runs, gets yeah. over ten yards, and then is trying to be pulled back by like three or four Steelers players. No, keeps going. Two more players get jump in the pile. He still keeps going. Honestly, if the whistles didn't stop him, because he was still making progress, I think he would have carried that entire team into the end zone. Yeah, I I, I would agree. I don't know if you saw that play, Bill, but that was another. Oh, that's yeah. another play of the game nominee for me. I mean, I still got to go with the flea flicker because that one's just. That's the type of play that can get people off their seats. It got me off my seat, and I was fucking crazy at that moment because that. I mean, you don't see the trick plays that often. I only see them in the playoffs from the Patriots. To be fair, right after after that play happened, all the momentum was with them. So I mean. It it really demoralized the Pittsburgh Steelers, and I mean that's what that sort of play is designed to do. They they were there for the run, and they gashed them with a fake run, and it it just annihilated. What's sad is that uh, some of the secondary players actually expected it, and they were right. But by that point, because they didn't have help from their safeties, because I think one of the secondary players. Of, uh, also saw the run coming so he ran in but no yeah, that's he, exactly he what he needed 
Just one of them needed to fall for it, and he they did. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was a perfect call at the perfect time in the perfect situation, and that's what New England does best. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't think, especially, Bill, we, we're not making any picks for this week, by the way, but next week nope. is when we have the final <laughs> pick of the year for the Super Bowl, but... I'm yep. just going to say this. If the Patriots win, I want to know how hard some people are going to try to say that Peyton Manning's the greatest of all time, Bradshaw is the greatest, or Joe Montana, because he's got five rings and he has incredible stats. Uh, can you say? I mean, I think he's already <laughs> proven to be the greatest. Because how many championship games, how many title games has he been in now, Bill? It's still a streak. For the uh, for the AFC title games, he's been in six straight. Anyway, Bill, I will be right back. All right, Bill, I'm back. Um, let's continue. We have. Um, I was gonna say. And how many Super Bowls does this make now? Seventh appearance? Seventh or eighth? This is this is number seven. Brady is four and two in the Super Bowl. This is number seven. I this is why I really want him to go five and two. But yep. I this I feel like this one is so special for both teams. I mean, if the Falcons win, I think that the city in a way did deserve it since they were a laughing stock for a couple years. But I oh, really yeah. think this this Super Bowl should absolutely go to the Patriots. It feels I mean, like with all the shit that that you had so many people get in their way, and if, and and Brady had to be had to actually be suspended for just to see. It was like a four game handicap to see if the if another team could get the first rank seed, like the Broncos or the Chiefs, take it away from them so they could host them and then beat them. That I think that's what Goodell was hoping for, but no, it didn't happen. It didn't happen, and he got beat. And that's why I want that. I just want him to hoist that trophy. And then after that, with Goodell in his face, he can say, this one's for you. That's all he needs to say. He doesn't have to sound anything. He doesn't say, no, fuck you. He doesn't say anything that's like that. Just say, show it to him. It's like, hey, I won this for you. Or because of you. <laughs> you know, just so it's enough of a hint to say, yeah, I'm still not. I still remember what you did to me. I still remember you tried so hard to get me suspended. And that's why I got this for you. Uh, I think what he's going to say is probably nothing towards Goodell and just lift it up and lift it up right in front of Goodell's face and he'll know. He'll know. I mean, to be fair, it, it that's going to be one of the big storylines this entire week. It already is. Two weeks. It already is. Like, we're not going to hear the end of this revenge against Bidel, and I'm fine with that. I think it's rightfully so. That's why they made this big run. And, I mean, if Gronk were here in this roster and playing, I would have said that the Patriots have absolutely no reason to lose. I can't guarantee it to them. I think this is going to be like, I give it like a 60% chance the Patriots can win this, and a 40% chance the Falcons I mean can. I'm I'm right now hovering at fifty fifty, but you know that's that's what you know a week and a half of thought will yeah. give me. Yeah, I think well the Patriots had to when as soon as Dallas was out, I think they immediately started preparing for the Falcons because I think they also thought that the Falcons were the more likely of the the two to make it, maybe. Well, but, to be fair, uh, with teams like New England, they take it one game at a time. The old the age-old adage for sports: we take it a game at a time. Oh, they we they broke that rule, remember? Uh, with the Steelers and the Bengals, or the Steelers and the uh, Dolphins games, like they knew the Dolphins were gonna win. <laughs> they knew. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, but you know, they they also they also sort of uh, they they sort of had a uh, gut feeling, you know. I mean. You're going to you're going to hedge your bets in terms of that who you're going to play, but it, it's not like you're going to. Uh, they probably had a they probably had a uh, contingency plan just in case the Miami Dolphins won. Anyway, Bill, I think that'll do it for this uh, for the um, 
the Patriots talk. We'll have more. Like we're gonna talk some. We're gonna give out some awards for next for next week when we talk about the uh, awards. the awards ceremony that's coming next week. But la- a little thing to mention: Pro Bowl had to be switched for some players. A lot of them got switched. So for example, like Lashawn McCoy, who was gonna go, who looked like an easy lock. He's not going. So Jay Ajayi, who I think is also worthy, is all is gonna go. But the only players I wanted to make note of, like Drew Brees is going to the Pro Bowl. You have um, Andy Dalton going, which is kind of like, eh, but whatever. I, he always gets in because the, like, there's always a quarterback who doesn't go, like Tom Brady. Alex Smith is going, right. Tyrod Taylor's going, and Kirk Cousins is going, which, eh, that's not the worst thing. But then you have other players that are sneaking, but like uh Jordan Howard, and then you had Sean Lee. So another Cowboys player is going. In fact, I will... Jordan Howard deserves it, though. That is a player to watch. Yeah. So now you have him going there. You have Eric Weddle, who I think was a sneaky good safety. I'm just kind of shocked he didn't make it in the first place. But remember, this is all just a popularity contest. Jimmy Graham's oh, yeah. going. But yeah. the last one I wanted to mention, Bill, fine, we get a Lions player after all. <laughs> Matt Prater is going in for uh, the the Falcons kicker since he's going to the Super Bowl. Matt Prater, I'm shocked he didn't make it in the first place. He's been he was Mr. Clutch all season long. I mean, aside from Justin Tucker, who's absolutely the best kicker in football right, right now, I'm... who I think he's going. I think he's going. Oh yeah, he should be. I mean, it'd yes, be he is. He is. If... <laughs> yes, he is. I... But yeah, I mean, it would be idiotic if he wasn't. That's the, going if he didn't ever. make it. That's how you know that we need to break this this uh, voting process apart. But, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So Matt Prater is in. Um, I'm gonna still go. I'm gonna go with the NFC winning anyway. I just with the quarterbacks on the AFC side, I don't trust them. They could have put Brock Osweiler. At this rate, Pearl they Bowl, might right? have reached him because of all the players hurt. Oh yeah. But oh, yeah. anyway, I think that'll do it. This podcast is shorter and so will next week's, but then we're well, next week's is the penultimate for the for the 2016-2017 season. Do you have anything else to say, Bill? Oh man, one more one week of uh building up of hype. We're already at the end of the season, Bill, and it feels like last month we were in week 1. Oh man, yeah, it feels. It really does. Yeah, I, I, I think this season had its its ups and downs. We'll see. I, I, I think we'll see you guys next week with uh, the penultimate podcast to the Super Bowl. See you guys then.